everyone. This is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here today with another dyeing experiment. Um, today we are going to be dyeing, um, immersion dyeing, some roving. Um, here is the label. Just some bare um, Peruvian wool roving from Nitpex, 100 grams. And I put in the pot just some plain water, you know, maybe about an inch deep. So we're going to be space dyeing this yarn. I'm using some dyes that we mixed and stored previously. We've got a green and some purple that we used um, the last time we were dyeing. Now I'm just going to add to this little bit of water a splash of vinegar. Just a little bit of white vinegar. There's also vinegar already mixed in with the dyes, so I didn't need to add too, too much. Um, the heat is on low and I just turned it on, which is why I mixed it with my fingers. Um, we, when dyeing roving, you don't want to let it bubble at all because roving is even more susceptible to felting than uh, just than the yarn that we've been do dealing with in the past. And so it's ideal to get it just below boiling. And so using a thermometer to check the temperature can be useful. And what I've read is that trying to get it to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. Um, we're not going to be stirring it when we add our dyes. It's possible that this will go horribly wrong and I'll still felt the yarn. But, you know, we won't know unless we try. So as this is slowly warming up, I'm going to add the roving before it is too hot. Um, I had pre-soaked it in just plain water um, before. And, you know, I'm just going to sort of distribute it randomly around the pot. And you can see that the water is still not warm enough where I can, don't want, there we go. And you can see that the water is barely, or the, the water barely covers the wool. And this is what we want, because since we're going to be space dyeing, we want the food coloring to get as much of the yarn as possible. So my thermometer no longer seems to be functional. I cannot turn it on. So we're not going to worry about that anymore. And we are just going to add the yarn and keep a close eye on this, keep the heat on low to keep it from boiling. All right, and so I'm now going to just start applying some dye. And I'm, you could just pour straight in, but I'm gonna use a syringe to inject the color in spots and to get it a little deeper. Um, so hopefully it's just not, you know, the surface. And so what's going to happen is the color will diffuse out, but should also remain somewhat local to where we place it. And so I'm just applying it in random spots and you can already see um, since this has a lot of Wilton's purple in it and we talked about breaking purple last time you can see the colors diffusing from where we place them uh, and so that's very pretty and wonderful And, you know, the wool itself probably is not that warm yet. But it's looking nice and fun. I guess one of the areas that I'm choosing as I'm injecting this dye, I'm choosing like 
edges where it's in between where two pieces of the roving might have sort of folded together and the reason why I'm choosing to do this is I want the colors to be spread around as much as possible and I really like it when I spin the yarn and there's a bit of a twist um, to it and so and that happens a lot when you know there's multiple colors mixed on one spot it's so fun how it looks very very blue when you first add it but then slowly you know, the colors change all right and since this is all getting mixed together in one pot, when I start adding the second color, which is a green, and it's probably a lot less um, concentrated than the purple, I'm not going to bother to wash the syringe. Um, so. But again, as I said, you can absolutely just pour the colors. And we're agitating as little as possible. The worst that could happen is that we can end up with some muddy, muddy brown colors. Um, or that we can still end up with a ton of white, which can be beautiful if it's just little bits. Um, but I, I don't know, I like watching colors spread out. We're definitely getting to a point where we don't see very much white up on top, which would be a good sign for us because we do not want to see as much white as possible. And so the less white we see up top means that if there's still a bunch of white you know, elsewhere, that's less of an issue. course doing these more superficial covers up here. Aren't quite as helpful as injecting deep, but there we go. We now have color all over the entire top, and so I am going to closely monitor this to make sure it doesn't start boiling hard. I'm going to put a cover on the pot and let this sit for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. It has been 10 minutes and it does not look like any of the water started to clear. Oh, I guess if I do that you can't see, but if I gently push in an area you can see that there's color on top of the spatula. And that's not what we want. And we also don't want to agitate it a lot. Um, and so I've, it's been very good and it's been stayed at below any kind of bubbling level, but there, it is possible for there to be heat um, trapped beneath the yarn. Um, and so that's not something that we want. Um, <laughs> You know, because we don't want there to be excess heat, and I really don't want to end up with a felted mess. Um, 
but we will let this um, sit another 10 minutes. It's maybe been a little longer than to a total of 20 minutes because I sort of forgot about it um, and I didn't hear the timer go off. Whoops! But thankfully, nothing's bubbling! Yay! And just to gently poke down into the center. And gently. Alright, when I do that, you see some dye move around. There's definitely some dye back in that corner. There's some dye over there. Okay, so we're mostly. Well, of course, it's bluish. The whole thing is. is blue. Um, Alright, well, I am going to let this go at this level of heat for another 20 minutes. So we'll let it go for 40 minutes total and then we'll be back. So it's been a total of 40 minutes since we finished adding the dye. And oh, my hand's in the way. There is still some blue in the water, but I'm having trouble knowing how much dye could still be in the fiber. So I've turned off the heat entirely and we're going to just let this sit and cool down because again I really don't want to agitate the yarn. The water is still a little warm, but it is, um, you know, I would say almost lukewarm at this point and I am I have no more patience and want to see what my roving looks like. So I'm going to remove it and place it in the bowl behind. Um, I'm going to very carefully remove it. I'm, it's not, I'm not removing as much water as I necessarily would have liked. But again, I don't want to agitate the fibers. And so, my shadow is in the way. We can see that we did get good coverage of the color, but I'm going to let this cool off completely before we rinse it out. So our space dyed roving is drying nicely, and I am proud to say that it is definitely not felted. It feels just as fluffy and ready to spin as any other roving that I've ever dyed. Um, and so I guess this is my third or fourth. So I'm glad that this method worked and it is something that I will try again in the future. Uh, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for watching this dyeing experiment.